Supportive care is a key aspect of managing anybody with gastric and G-junction cancer. Um, patients commonly have dysphagia, weight loss, nutritional issues. Peritoneal disease can impact on nutrition as well. Neuropathy can uh, play a role. And there's psychosocial factors as well. And I found that um, the better we are at supportive care, the better we are at delivering chemotherapy, the better it's tolerated, and, and ultimately outcomes are better. Um, so I'm fortunate to practice an area where we have access to lots of, lots of help, um, social worker, dietitian, gastroenterologist, surgeons. Um, and, and, you know, I think we need to take advantage of that, that support to provide, you know, ancillary uh, support to our patients. There can be challenges um, for multidisciplinary involvement. I think the, you know, the ob I mean, one obvious challenge is that people are busy. Um, you know, you know, the physicians, surgeons, medical oncologists, radiation oncologists. Um, I think, you know, I'm fortunate I practice in an area where we feel that, you know, we gain a lot um, in terms of uh, learning from each other and offering our patients the better care with a multidisciplinary approach. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if someone is un unable to come, I, I'd be sure I am sure to email them or text them or sort of follow up to see, you know, if if uh, they had any questions about any cases or get their input to sort of remind them that they, their input matters. Um, but I think that's one one challenge. I think another challenge is that um, in in many areas, unfortunately, it's not convenient to do multidisciplinary care. It's um, uh, you know, people are coming from a distance, uh, they don't all practice in the same area, um, so coordinating that time is a challenge. Um, I, you know, I, I'm hopeful that with our new technology we can do more virtual multidisciplinary meetings. Um, we're doing that more and more uh, through my involvement in ASCO and other things like that, uh, but I think that that may be of some benefit because, um, uh, pay, you know, physicians can participate in, the, in a multidisciplinary uh, uh, program, uh, you know, in, 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 at their office or something like that, so they can still participate um, at their guidance and learn from others. The TAG study was a phase three study in the third line setting. It was a study of TAS 102 versus placebo or best supportive care. Um, and it's, it's actually surprising that we can do a best supportive care phase three study in the third line setting, but that it was done. And it was in fact positive. So over 500 patients were randomized. It was a two to one randomization. The median survival with TAS 102 was about five months versus three months with the placebo. So um, these data were just reported at the World GI meeting in Barcelona. Um, and it's fantastic because it adds, likely it'll add another drug to our armamentarium for treating gastric cancer. There, there have been many, many um, studies performed in gastric cancer in the, in the, um, in terms of phase three regi registrational trials. Recently, there are several that have been negative, but there are several that are ongoing. Uh, we're, we're awaiting the results of the phase three uh, first line study of full fox plus or minus the MMP9 inhibitor and aleximab, um, and the Phase two study that supported the phase three study just was published in clinical cancer research, um, and the data were compelling, and median survivals were well over a year. So uh, that may change the landscape. The uh, use of pembrolizumab or nivolumab in the first line setting uh, may change the landscape as well. Um, so I think, I think there, you know, drug development is quite active. Uh, there, there was a um, a novel ADC, uh, antibody drug conjugate, uh, that was recently published in Lancet uh, that targeted HER2. Um, the, you know, that there's studies ongoing now uh, examining that in the advanced line setting as well.